Welcome back to New Rockstars. Is Marvel Studios' Blade officially dead now that the film has lost yet another director in Yon Dimanche? Why is it so hard for Marvel to just do a story about a cool black half vampire who hunts vampires? We're gonna talk about whether the Daywalker will ever see the light of day. Mmm, oh my god. This is the sneak peek, the weekly show on New Rockstars where we look ahead to the future of fandom. And I'm Jessica Clemens here with Eric Voss. Why, weren't we just talking about this, Jess? And then we said this this movie will never get doomed because we yeah. uh, we feel good about this director. And sure enough, that director is like, uh, I, I've been uh, uh, gone for a while. Yeah, it feels like deja vu all of a sudden. And it's not deja vu, it's actual reality. This is part two, I guess we have to say, of our Is Blade Doomed <laughs> series. Uh, and we're gonna ask at this point, should Marvel Studios just give up? Should they punt to the other side of Secret <laughs> Wars? they just give up? Like, what the hell is going on with it? Why is this so hard? I have no like, idea. But I think there might be something specific to the character of Blade and the way Marvel wants to reimagine the character that may be the reason why this has just been so complicated. So we talked about some, like, sh title shifts in society and in the oh. world that just were unfortunate timing for Blade leading up to now. But now here we are, and everything should be a go. And why still? It's becoming impossible. Yeah. Um, so news broke on Wednesday from Deadline and other outlets that Jan Demange has stepped down from being director of the upcoming MCU Blade movie. He is the second director to do so, following Bassam Tariq leaving the project back in December 2022. So Jan Demange is best known for directing an episode of Lovecraft Country. He was uh, announced in late November 2022. Mahershala Ali has been the one constant with this project. He came to Marvel and said, if you want to do a Blade... I'm your blade. And Marvel's like, if you want to be our blade, you can be our blade. And then basically it seems like he has had a lot of creative control over what mm. this project will be from day one. Mm. Uh, is he just impossible to please? What is in Mahershala Ali's mind is what we want to know. Like, well, yeah. What if he's the one that's actually beefing with everyone? I don't think he is. I don't think it's him. Uh, mainly because I love Mahershala and I can't imagine him being a mean person, but it's like, I don't know. It's hard because Ryan Coogler had the same connection with Chadwick Boseman for Black Panther. Like Chadwick was like creating the role just as much as he was writing it. So it is very important for some of the main actors for the movie to also have some creative input. Just to kind of break down, we've had two directors so far. Bassam Tariq was hired in September 2021 and then left a year later in September 2022. And then Jan Dimanche took over in November 2022 and then departed sometime over the past few months. It was announced here in June 2024, but it sounds like he's been gone for a few months now. The project has gone through at least six writers, starting with Stacey Osei Kafour, hired in February 2021. Then Bo DeMeo was brought on in mm. September 2022. And then Michael Starbury was brought on in November 2022. Nick Pozzolato is hired uh, in April 2023. Then Michael Green was hired in November 2023. Seemed to, based off of like, Michael Green's experience with like a lot of other superhero movie scripts before mm -hmm. seemed to have like a take that the studio was confident in. Uh, yeah. But then in the past couple of weeks uh, is when we learned that the studio is mostly OK with his story, but is bringing in their longtime studio mm -hmm. in-house scribe Eric Pearson to be doing some tweaks and punch ups. So we felt confident based off of that, that mm -hmm. that was like the script that they're moving forward with. But with the director lead. Yeah, it's different. It, Feels like we're back at square one. Yeah, directors don't change that much unless they see something that's a problem or schedule conflicts. But they would have said it was schedule conflicts, which they didn't. Um, when directors, it reminds me of how like Wicked had, went through a bunch of directors. And a lot of directors will say no after reading the script. And that's what makes me nervous. Um, there's a lot of reasons for directors to leave. Also, it could be like the production is just too big, too daunting, too much, unorganized. So that's what makes me nervous about him leaving because he was on for a minute and then left. So that kind of forces us to wonder what were the disagreements in this instance? Mm -hmm. Well, there was some announcement in recent days about a possible Midnight Suns movie in development at Marvel Studios mm -hmm. with writer Michael Green being working on this Midnight Suns project for Marvel Studios. And the Midnight Suns would be like the team up that Blade would go on to after this film. Um, so that's just kind of, we just assume that, you know, this Blade movie based off of that might have some team up with, you know, Dane Whitman. We already saw that happen in the Eternals post credit scene. Are you sure you're ready for that, Mr. Whitman? Uh, where <laughs> by night, uh, Gallagher Sierra Bernal, 
we have uh, potentially Moon Knight showing up uh, as part of this lineup. Doctor Strange could be in it in some way, or if not Doctor Strange, someone like Wong or Mordo mm. could could join that lineup. Uh, who would just be like a, a like a team, a lineup of superheroes on the you know the horror and the mystic side of the MCU who confront all these mystic threats and supernatural threats. Uh, I think we're ready for a Midnight Suns movie. That's where we want this all to go. But do you wonder if, like, once Marvel Studios was ready to move forward with that, Jan Demange is like, I don't want to do a, like, a prequel to a team-up movie. Like, I don't want to do something. I want to just tell my own complete beginning, middle, and end. It kind of sucks being put into a box. So I could kind of see that being the case because you might have some creative freedom, but at the end of the day, you have to still go around the same kind of maneuvers but it's also like you know you're doing that when you jump into a marvel movie it's all connected Mm -hmm. so it's Mm -hmm. like there's some things you can do and there's some things you can't do so i don't think he didn't know that a possible midnight suns movie is that something uh pre-secret wars or post-secret wars post-secret wars just because we don't have time (laughs) just because we don't have time and if we do do it it would have to be how i would see it Happening before Secret Wars, it would be a uh, special presentation and it would come Mm -hmm. out around Halloween and it wouldn't include any of the current people we have today. Uh, I think it would be like a lot of new people and that would include Ghost Rider. Mm, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you do a Midnight Suns without Ghost Rider? Yeah. I guess is a question. And that would be like their little introduction, which would be nice. And you could even throw in Werewolf by Night if you really want to force them in there. Yeah, I think uh, Ghost Rider and the Mephisto of it would probably be the question of whether it's before or after Secret Wars. Mm -hmm. Because uh, they have enough for the team already established in the MCU. They just need to have a movie where they all come together. And that hmm. can happen. I mean, it's, it seems like Secret Wars might take them a long time to work up to. Yeah. Um, but but I think, wouldn't you want the next like super team-up to be after the biggest team-up? I guess. I don't know. I don't want to see Doctor Strange again until Secret Wars. That's my, yeah. like, that's my whole thing. And I know Doctor Strange would probably be in this group. You know, what's, what's tough is, like, I'm more excited by the promise of a Midnight Suns lineup based off of the actors who have already been established in the MCU than I hmm. am for the Thunderbolts film that we know quite a bit about based off of that's that interesting lineup. i'm like i would be more excited for midnight suns if it's new characters uh, including half old but like if you're gonna introduce a team of these mystics just give me a new one give me a new one uh and because the new one will be characters that we've seen in other properties just not in the mcu because i would love to just see them be like here's ghost rider if we never see mephisto i'm like here's mephisto <laughs> like it's all these people that they've been talking about and we didn't see a lot of yeah, but also Thunderbolts. You, I'm not going to compare anything to Thunderbolts. I'm excited for Thunderbolts in a different way that I'm excited for everything else. You think that if like right now, if you were to say uh, a year from now, there's going to be a movie with Oscar Isaac as Moon Knight, with Mahershala Ali as Blade, with uh, Guy Garcia Bernal as, as uh, Jack Russell, Werewolf by Night, and then uh, Man Thing uh from that as well um plus like mordo from doctor strange you wouldn't be excited for that i would be only excited for moon knight (laughs) because you didn't even mention blade right so i would be like mahershala is blade and he hasn't come yet that doesn't count in your category because he's not here yet (laughs) that's fair well i guess he did show at the end of eternals i guess you could say he technically is um i'd be excited for moon knight and blade that is the only two I would not imagine the team up shot, though, that, you know, in Avengers 2012, the camera circled around them as they're working together here. It's like Mark Spector fighting a demon and then a Jack Russell's jumping around, pouncing on him, clawing a blade. It's just with this sword, just like cutting him to pieces. And then Mordo is like using creepy spells to like move his body parts around. I get to, like, you know, set up Jack Russell crazier? to slash it. If it was, uh, here comes, here comes, I keep going back to uh, Ghost Rider. It's like, here comes Ghost Rider, vroom, and every other character that we haven't seen that we want. And I'd be like, that is crazy. Uh, give me hell. Give me hell. Um, what what I left out for my pitch is that they're fighting Mephisto in hell. In that uh, well, Mephisto hasn't shown up yet. So Mephisto's technically on my team of newcomers Wh- on Hold Midnight on. Suns. What? There's a newcomer <laughs> team and the old team. <laughs> Mephisto hasn't showed up yet. 
Hold on. Uh, Wait, I, what? I, I'm sorry to completely destroy your entire. I guess the yeah, issue Mephisto. is, is that like if Mephisto shows up in Ironheart as Sasha Baron Cohen, yeah. that is not like a fun battle in that instance. I don't need to see Sasha Baron Cohen fighting all these guys. I feel like he'd be like just Boratting in there. What faces. if it is just Borat? What if it is just him with the little mustache? <laughs> yeah, is Sasha Baron Cohen the best Mephisto for the MCU? I think it's a weird... I think he's a great actor. And I'm not gonna... I'll, I'll die on that hill. I think he's a great actor when he really puts himself to, like, an actual role. And so I think it's gonna be fun to see what character he takes on for Mephisto. But the only part of him that I see in Mephisto is his, his lanky, tall body. That's the mm-hmm. only part that I see like really serving is his weird shape. Yeah, I feel like with Mephisto, I want someone really old or really like young, like a young 20 something actor who it just like, you know, like a Barry Keoghan type, you know, um, you can't I was have like, Barry Keoghan funny. now because he's already been in the Eternals. But like I was, someone who is just a really good actor. I was imagining a really tall Trevor uh, Slattery, a very tall Ben Kingsley. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> I would love Ben Kingsley as Mephisto. That'd be very fun. But I think his role as Trevor Slattery is way more better. It's perfect for him. And he has so much fun. And I don't want that role to ever be taken away. I think I think we just got to call back uh, Jonathan Majors to play Mephisto. Right? I don't think he would. I don't even think he would be a good Mephisto. No, he would not be good. I think he was a good king. Not for this. <laughs> and that is it. But a good thing Hollywood has now is giving him a Perseverance Award, right? Yeah, they're giving him an award. <laughs> Insane. Wild as hell. Wild as hell. Perseverance reward. Wild as hell. I think we should also quickly touch on the news this week. Entertainment Weekly reporting exclusively that Taylor Swift will not appear in Deadpool Oh my freaking God. I trust Entertainment Weekly as an outlet. I used to subscribe to Entertainment Weekly. They were my entry point to entertainment journalism and movie news when I was an impressionable teenager in Florida. In the Florida suburbs, no access point to the industry, Entertainment Weekly, and Jeff Jensen's lost recaps were my were the way I discovered TV analysis and film analysis. Uh, however, I have to take issue with this article, because while I believe them when they say we can exclusively report and that they're referring to some source, you have to attribute your scoop to something. You cannot just say we can exclusively report you have to say per our sources at least or due to uh, from sources close to production you know ap style is you have to name your source unless it's Mm -hmm. like you're trying to win a pulitzer from the washington post and you if you name this source they'll be (laughs) uh taken by the government and locked away somewhere this is entertainment news but that's why the journalistic standards are different at least say due to sources we've talked to they didn't even have any kind of clause in that statement. In fact, the one thing they said was a quote from Sean Levy that we all read three months ago. And if that's your source, then that is not a scoop. That's not something you can exclusively report Entertainment Weekly. So I love you guys. I'm heartbroken that you had to discontinue your print edition (laughs) and move to digital only. That sucks. But just realize that, you know, your audience, your readership are a bunch of people who heard Andrew Garfield say, I'm not in the film. And then sure enough, he shows up in the film. And then he shows uh, up in the film. It's not hard for Ryan Reynolds or Sean Levy or someone who works in the movie to just use you, Entertainment Weekly, to say, like, just kind of put the kibosh on this right now. Also, what if she's, like, singing in it? What if it's, like, a CGI version of her? Does that count as them being, like, she didn't appear? What if she has a song that plays over the credits? Yeah. Like, oh, uh, absolutely. Like Lady Gaga's song in Top Gun Maverick. You got to imagine Taylor Swift's going to win, become an Oscar winner for best original song. And this is her best shot at doing it. That's true. There will be a Taylor Swift song, at least in it. Yeah, I I guess I I would still be surprised to see her in this movie. I I don't think she's Lady Deadpool. I'd even be surprised to see her as Dazzler. I think she's just going to have a real quick random cameo and then quickly leave the movie so Mm -hmm. that she doesn't like overtake the movie. Oh, yeah. Watch someone just be watching her music video on like a screen in the TVA. And yeah. he's like, or, oh, or, you also have Taylor Swift here? <laughs> oh, or like he like just this? references her like he has in the other movies. Mm. He wore her cats on his on his shirt in the second movie. I think oh. that could be enough. All right. So that's where I stand. I know people are going to think like, oh, you're this is your next Mephisto. The train has already left the station and you're going down with the ship. 
no, I, I think it's very possible that she's not in the movie. And if she's not in the movie, that's totally okay. There's like a million other things I'm way more excited about for Deadpool mm-hmm. and Wolverine than the possibility of Taylor Swift showing up. I just am fascinated to see her and Ryan Reynolds and their whole marketing operation play these weird little games to make us like wonder if she might be. I I, mm-hmm. I like seeing when like studios get creative and, and actors and marketing teams get creative with like trying to play this game with viewers. I, I just like that part of it. We here at New Rockstars love one-shot energy, but we also love one-shot focus chews and one-shot voice drops. It just depends on what mood you're in. <sighs> I need a one-shot energy chew. Chew, 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 chew. <laughs> I need a one shot focus chew. I need a one shot voice drop. One shot energy chews, one shot focus chews, and one shot voice drops are all natural, delicious ways to make it through your day. Stock up on one shot today by going to oneshotenergy.com slash new rock stars for 10% off your order. So looking ahead to next week on New Rock Stars, uh, we have uh, our coverage of House of the Dragon season two. Tonight, you will see Jessica and Brandon and Zach reacting to episode one the season premiere of house of the dragon yeah. that will be on the break room channel so go subscribe to break room and that um that upload will come maybe an hour or two after the episode drops on max yeah and then that's tomorrow, why i'm dressed like this also i just want to say oh, that that is why i'm dressed like this i'm not dressed uh, like this for fun <laughs> it's for that episode so go watch me wear the exact same clothes <laughs> that i'm wearing right now 18 minutes have gone by and viewers have been wondering why Jess is dressed this way or didn't mind. <laughs> and now you have your answer. So One stay. day you should wear a wig and then just never address it. Never address it. I should. I should just gradually start changing little aspects of my appearance. Like, I don't like obviously shave your face. Some more salt has come into the pepper of the beard. And I'm and I wondered, like, should I just shave it? Because I feel I, like I, I don't know if I'm ready. Preserve for my youth. You're going to scare again. your baby. I really do. He because likes your baby my, is so used um, to beard you. and like he likes the texture. So he'll just hmm. look up at me and reach up and grab my chin and my face. And it's like my favorite thing. That's how he differentiates you from Kelly. <laughs> well, he reaches up to Kelly's face and starts grabbing her face. And he's like, where's he's beard? Like, oh, beard. Not beard. <laughs> Not beard. <laughs> Not beard. Tomorrow on New Rock Stars, you'll see uh, my Easter egg breakdown of House of the Dragon episode one, and I go hard ooh, into ooh, this ooh, analysis. Ooh, ooh. You, you're gonna, oof! I, I go deep into the lore. Like I'm far more educated on House of the Dragon and Fire and Blood this year than I was when we covered season one. Mm-hmm. So I, I really, I worked out in the off season. I, I wanted to just be your true lore expert. So I, uh, I'll never be as good as Alt Shift X. He's the best at, at uh, a song of ice and fire analysis, but mm. you know, that's I, he's my workout buddy. I've never, met him. <laughs> I like his stuff though. And then uh, Wednesday will be our breakdown of the acolyte episode four. And then uh, that will be on the new Rockstars channel. And then you'll see uh, an after show on Tuesday night on the break room channel. Uh, and then uh, we'll have Jessica's Breakdown of the Boys, episode four, coming out on New Rockstars on Thursday with a boys after show on Thursday morning on New Rockstars or the on boys. the break room. Um, a quick note about we'll get to what we're watching. Just one other little kind of soapbox I'm going to give. I think uh, I apologize to everyone, but I have surrendered and I will not be tweeting about anything Star Wars for the next two months uh just twitter has become awful and for the acolyte any, for the yeah it's acolyte related but it's just like i've realized that there is a concentrated effort by uh certain groups who have certain opinions about star wars mm-hmm. to find uh creators who talk about star wars and use our replies as platforms for their misinformation and bullshit Mm-hmm. So the only way I have to get around this is to just not tweet about it mm-hmm. because they are using our, our reply threads to connect with each other and spread misinformation and just be awful. So it's no. like, you're, if you, if you don't like the acolyte, that's fine. It's not a perfect show. 
I have a lot of issues with it too. Uh, but unless I go out and tear down everything about it, they're going to call me a shill and say that I'm paid off. And it's like, that's never the way I've approached movies yeah. and TV for, for eight years is I, I always, if I talk about it, I want to celebrate the artistry of it. And like, I don't want to do like shit posts on everything. And I'm sure by, as the season goes on, if it fails to deliver on its promises, you're going to hear me talk about it in the breakdowns because that's unavoidable. But like, unless I just regurgitate the same like hateful shit that you get from other people on YouTube, then I'm paid and I'm, I'm categorically a paid off shill. And that's yeah. just so like bogus and stupid. Star Wars, and so you guys... I'm just going to do my thing. Gonna talk, gonna analyze this show the way I analyze, try to analyze everything. And uh, I'm not gonna try to win you over. If you don't wanna watch the show, don't watch it. That's fine. I don't care. That's insane. That's what happens. I'm not trying to like split up the fandoms, but Star Wars fans, come on. One of the longest running like franchises. Yeah. We're, I, I, we're imploding on ourselves now. Like it's hard for people to wanna become fans of anything now because you guys are attacking them. Not all yeah. of you, but you know what I'm talking about. Like, damn, yeah, Marvel has the same problem, but not to this degree. You don't have to like everything. You don't. You don't have to like the Acolyte. Um, just like not all Star Wars fans have to watch Bad Batch. Not all Star Wars fans have to watch Ahsoka. You know, you don't have to watch the sequels. You don't have to like the prequels. Like, to attack people for liking something, I just think is, like, such a petty thing and a petty waste of time. Yeah. Like, just let people like the Acolyte. That's not a political statement to say that you like the accolade. Literally, literally. There's a and I, I, and I promise I won't attack you for not liking it. I think it's not a perfect show, and if you don't want to watch it, that doesn't make you a bad person. I think that's fine. But yeah. what does make you a bad person is to go around and start yelling at people and bullying people and saying really hurtful, mean things to people um, to review bomb things. Yeah, that makes you kind of shitty. Whatever happened to if you have nothing? And it's so crazy because I'm like I, I don't. It's not worth it. It's not worth it to type it out. It's not worth to send it. It's not. It genuinely isn't. Go do something else. Go take a go touch grass. Walk. Yeah, go touch grass. Go <laughs> run a lap in your apartment. Get the zoomies out of you like a cat. Come back. Let's wrap up. We've kind of covered a lot of ground in this episode. Let's check mm -hmm. in on what we're, we're watching. watching. Uh, I haven't been watching a lot of reality TV right now, uh, which is good. I don't know. Um, okay. uh, I am rewatching just a bunch of different things. I'm rewatching uh, King of the Hill again. This is like my fifth time. Uh, quality writing, quality comedy. Dale, nice. still King my favorite the... character. Dale, Dale is such a easily. Good character. The, I don't know. When I was a child watching the show, I was like, Dale's just funny and kooky. As an adult, I was like, this man is insane. And it's so funny. I'm like, he is literally a lunatic. But to me, yeah. Peggy Hill, I think Peggy Hill might be one of the best written characters. I of all love time. Peggy so much. When <laughs> Peggy is speaking Spanish and it's completely wrong, so I, when I was a child, close. it's so fun. It's so <laughs> funny. When I was a child, I didn't recognize that she was doing it wrong half the time. And then when I watched the episode where she was like talking to the girl and kidnapping the child, she was speaking Spanish wrong the entire time. What are you guys watching? Uh, we okay. watched um, the new Richard Linklater, Glenn Powell movie, Hitman. Oh, yeah. Did you like it? Um, I'm kind of mixed on it, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Like, it has some of, like, my favorite scenes ever. Like, it's it's like how I first felt when I watched Knives Out. It's, like, mm. such a fresh take that, like, it's it so defies tropes that, like, I was missing certain kind of pacing uh, needs or got a little too indulgent. But I think those indulgences are what people are really loving. Like, it kind of feels like what this is just what Ryan Johnson does as a filmmaker mm. is he'll just like be like, I think this is fun right now. And I'm going to craft this sequence to just be as long as I want it to be. And you'll like it or you won't. But I don't care. Um, but uh, so, like, I just think the montage of like all the different incarnations, like I wanted him to just like pick one or two and yeah. just like stay as that. Trope. I haven't watched I, it yet. OK, so I won't spoil anything, but I will just say. I think Glenn Powell is awesome and he's one of I like, I'm so Powell. glad he's like a star blowing up right now. I think he was yes. too handsome to play this part. I think he's yeah. too sexy to play yeah. this part. Yeah. I yeah. think you needed a, a Steve Carell or you needed a Jesse Plemons. Yeah, because isn't he a teacher? A weird. 
Isn't he, he a teacher? Is. Like and I'm like, yeah. Glenn Powell would never be a teacher. If he's Glenn too Powell high. were a teacher, the, all the parents would be like, he's fired. He can't teach our kids. He's, he's literally eye candy. <laughs> Get him yeah. out of here. Go model. <laughs> but I think he's really good. And I like that actor a lot. And I, he's I one of these Glenn guys Powell. that I'll just watch him in anything, I think. I will. I'm glad that he is getting that star, like that star meter going up right now because he genuinely will be in a movie now and I will watch it because it says Glenn Powell. Because I'm like, yeah. he's fun. He's having fun. I'm I'm happy and for him. I'll watch anything with Glenn Powell and I'll watch everything Richard Linklater makes. I just think he is mm. such an interesting filmmaker and he's made, he's made like School of Rock, but then he's made the Before series, but then he made <laughs> Boyhood and now he's working on uh, Merrily Will Go Along, right? Or is it Carousel? He's working on some musical and he's taking 20 years to make it. So it'll come out when he's 80 years just, old. Just it'll like Boyhood? In, yeah. Yeah. Just I think like it's going to come out in like boyhood? 2030 something. I hate him for that. I hate him for that shit. Because during boyhood, that was fine. I was a kid. I was at least like in college. Now I'm like, great. So I'm going to be ancient. I'm going to be yeah, ancient. He's going to keep doing Merrily, this. But Merrily is set over 20 years, but it goes, ba- it progresses backward in time. So I, it means he's going to shoot like the earlier scenes of the movie at the very end of this production period. What happens? <laughs> not, in a, not in a crazy way, respectfully. What if something crazy happens? If you shoot in this in New York, or not, that was a bad example. I'm thinking like the Twin Towers. Oh, well, what like happens the, when you're going backwards and it's there in the, at the, be- at the end, but it wasn't there at the beginning? <laughs> Well, I don't think he's gonna shoot any visible landmarks. Would be my guess. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't use. I didn't want to use nine eleven. I, I, the bad part saying. was I immediately brought. I said, "What if you shoot in New York?" And I went, "Jessica, <laughs> what, which one are you leaning towards?" He's gonna um, bring in some VFX artists, like you oh, know uh, those Marvel folks who change the Statue of Liberty yeah. back from green to copper color. You and you and those in the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> The green I'm just coffee. so glad that someone spent money at Marvel Studios to do that. Because they have <laughs> to, because of people like us. That's the thing. That's the part that gets me. Because sometimes no in the boys, re-watching. in the boys, in the boys, they'll do. They won't do stuff like that. In the boys, uh-huh. they don't do stuff like that. They're like, I'm not gonna go back and fix it. <laughs> That's crazy. And to be fair, it's probably someone that was like, um, unfortunately, it was probably like an intern or someone that they were like, wait, do you want to do something major? And they were like, yeah. I'll turn it a different color. Yep, that's what we're watching this week. Uh, let us know what you're watching in the comments below. Um, we wanted to end this episode of Sneak Peek because this is kind of like our weekly check-in on new rock stars. You know, we're covering lots of different stuff throughout the week, but this is where Jessica and I kind of come together and check in with each other and the stuff we're working on. Uh, and something happened this past week that we wanted mm-hmm. to address on new rock stars. Um, so this, uh, like a week ago, um, a friend of the channel and a YouTuber you might know named uh, Benny Potter aka comic historian, passed away. Um, his wife, Natalie, posted on um, on X and on a community post on the Comic Historian channel that uh, he passed away due to an unfortunate accident. And we, we since found out it was it was like a car accident. Um, and um, he was 40 years old. And I just can't say enough wonderful things about, um, about Benny. He was such an important figure to anyone who talked about comic books or comic book media on and, and manga on, on this platform. And was just a class act and um, just such a caring, wonderful, enthusiastic, brilliant guy. And we did a collaboration with him on New Rockstars back in October. Uh, and that was the first, actually, no, it was the second time I got to meet him because I did uh, through uh, Rooster Teeth and uh, the kind of funny folks. I got to co host a panel with him like years before. But he, uh, he had been in LA. We did a collaboration where I did a video for his channel, he did a video for New Rockstars with me. And was just just in some conversations, gave us some ideas that like blew our minds and we were able to apply mm-hmm. at New Rockstars and just like changed our game in a lot of ways. And I was just so grateful that I got to spend time with him. Um, and it's it's obviously just really hard when we lose someone like this because you see someone on social media and you think that they are not like you forget that they're a person yeah. who who feels feelings who uh, can get hurt and you could lose at some point because they're just like, they show up on your screen. Um, But like, you know, the people who make this stuff are real and you can lose people. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. Um, And it's just not going to be the same without Benny. And I'm just really grateful to him. The fact that he did that collaboration with us, you know, 
here's the first, we, we want to do something fun in October and reach out to a lot of different people that we had never really worked with to collaborate with. Benny was the first one on our list. Cause I'm like, how have we never done something with comic story? And he responded right away, got it done. And then like, sadly, there was a couple other people we reached out to who just completely like ghosted us, weren't interested in working with new rock stars. And it was just kind of like, so the fact that Benny said, yes, I just meant the world like to us. Mm. And, and it was very kind of him to do that. Um, and I'll always be grateful to him, not just for the great content he made over 4,000 videos, breaking down comics, like no one else could, but just like the fact that he took the time out of his busy life and busy schedule just to like reach out to us and connect with us and oh. I really miss you, Benny. I'm just really sad. And I, uh, and I'm just sorry for everyone who knew you and, and, uh, had you in their lives and it won't be the same without you for everyone else out there uh reach out to your loved ones call someone you haven't talked to in a while and then just like uh and tell people that you love them because you don't know if they'll be the last one you can well i love you jess and uh, uh, you. <laughs> and and i love everyone uh who we get to work with um so everyone have a great weekend happy father's day oh uh, yeah and uh, call your dad. Yeah, call him a bitch. I didn't say you just have to call your dad. <laughs> just be like, I'm going to call you, my dad. If you have a good relationship with your dad, I don't. Maybe give him a call. <laughs> and that's I fine do not. too. That is okay. <laughs> oh, God, what have I done? <laughs> All right, everybody, stay safe out there. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. Bye bye. Bye.